Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is my final project, which is faster, more practical, and higher quality unstructured light field photography. As some background and review, uh, light field photography enables refocusing, 3D construction, and a bunch of other advanced photography techniques depending on how dense your capture data is. Unstructured light field photography compromises between structured LMP and standard digital photography in that uh, it doesn't require specialized equipment, uh, but it is actually able to refocus and read 3D construct and such. Uh, the only caveat is unstructured. Uh, light field photography requires extra processing steps to recover uh, structure. Um, the refocusing centric uh, pipeline was introduced in assignment 4, and that was to first capture planner video, uh, to second align the images using two dimensional shifts. We use template matching for that, class with 2D cross correlation, and to then merge the image stack. There are a couple of issues with this ex existing pipeline, and this project was actually inspired by my own experiences with the project. First. It's very tedious and hard-coded because you have to select a patch and specify its window for search. Second, it's not robust because robust you can't re focus on repeated patterns or flat spots. Third, it's poor quality because uh, the blur contains a lot of um, artifacts. Here are some examples. Uh, I moved my camera in the N-shaped path shown here in blue. Um, what I did too was I moved up and then I didn't know that I should keep a positive velocity so I kind of paused a bit at the corners of each end. Because of the pausing, there's an unusually dense amount of photos at the corners of the end. So you can see with the laptop screen, there's like two discrete diagonal images that are very powerful. And then the rest of the blur is a little bit up there. And then with the charging block here at the bottom, uh, it actually has a clear in shaped smear, sort of. So the problem with this is that the blur just directly reflects the shape of the capture gun. Uh, and then finally, it's also slow because we're performing a 2D correlation on every frame each time we refocus. So the improvements I propose are to first keep the pipeline and then to replace our template matching with multiple view geometry to estimate camera poses and compute shifts based on that. Uh, we also, I also want to experiment with better merging schemes. Uh, some ideas, for example, are gouging, which weights images based on their distance, their, sorry, the magnitude of the shift. Radial, which treats all the shifts as polar coordinates, and then weights based on angular density, and hybrid, which does both at the same time. So as a background on the exact uh, multiple view geometry algorithm I chose, it's called Structure from Motion. It's a three-step process that first identifies features across your image set, then it matches features as like which ones are the same one, uh, and then they must be the same 3D points. And then, so from this, it computes uh, the camera parameters using the given constraints and iteratively refines that. Um, this is an extension on the feature matching, and the reason why I believe that this will be better than feature matching, which is what we actually use with template matching, uh, is that it uses the pro camera projection constraints to refine the guesses over time, and I think that should make it more accurate. So my implementation was I used a library called CallMap. I considered some others, especially Python-based ones for integration, but they didn't work out. Um, but CallMap takes an Im image sequence and outputs a set of 3D points. A screenshot of CallMap's outputs is on the right. You can see my N-shaped camera pose uh, path recovered quite accurately. Everything else was implemented as Python as in previous assignments. So here are my results. First, uh, the colors represent the different approaches. So blue is the old template matching, and green is structure from motion. You'll notice, of course, structure from motion is way faster. Importantly, too, uh, the dark parts of each bar are the time taken to refocus, uh, and the light parts are the time taken to process one stack. So, for example, if you uh, were to load a stack and refocus three times, uh, this first blue bar would mean that you pre-process for like 20 seconds, and the first refocus takes like 250 seconds, and then 250 seconds for every refocus after that. And so asymptotically, if you are doing many, if you want to refocus on many things, which I think is the common use case, um, template matching is actually very bad. Structure for motion, on the other hand, front loads all the work by computing the camera poses, and then each reconstruction takes like a single digit number of seconds. So this is way more practical. Robustness is also improved. Here's an example where I clicked on the blue point to select my focal point, and uh, structure, my algorithm sort of selects the nearest 3D feature point that's actually extracted from SFM, so that was the tip of the wave in this case. So we have an image that looks approximately focused on blue. It's not perfect. There is a way to get this perfect by sort of like pr projecting array actively and then reprojecting it using my framework, uh, but I didn't have time to go into that. And finally, the artifacts have been successfully produced. Uh, on the left side, you can see this is the original um, 
image, and both the aforementioned uh, template-based and SFM-based uh, algorithms achieve this exact same result just using different methods. Um, but once I introduce the weighting algorithms, it looks like the Gaussian one looks way better. It, it just simply looks more like a normal camera's Gaussian blurring effect from the focus. Uh, the artifacts are all reduced. Um, the density effects are all reduced, and it looks really good overall. Uh, the radial one is interesting because it has several discrete sub-images, sort of, instead of just two, which are the uniform ones. The hybrid ones is not very notable, it's sort of just a weaker version of the radial. This can be explained further uh, by these graphs, where I plotted the weights assigned to each image uh, according to the image. And the x-axis is sort of tracing the, the image index, so it's like tracing the path. Uh, parametrically through the end. So uniform is flat as expected. Gaussian uh, did the desired behavior of putting low weights to the corners of the end, which are approximately 15 and 45, I think, uh, indexed. And so as a result, it ends up having this nice round Gaussian blur looking uh, result. Radial weighting was really sensitive to outliers, for example, where the curve changed direction or crossed by the middle point. And the hybrid one sort of looks like a convolution of both and didn't really achieve good results either. So overall, the structure from motion com uh, component was hugely successful. Uh, we no longer need uh, all this input and patch selection. It's more robust, as shown, by the, as shown by the focus on the ceiling, and it is way faster to run. And some of the merging methods were successful. The Gaussian blur was a huge improvement, um, but the radial and hybrid methods, I think their theory is sound, but the implementation is flawed and could use a revisit. Thank you very much for your time.